And my name is Jack Goodings, and thank you for coming to this uh, YouTube channel. What you'll hear on here is parental alienation and narcissistic abuse. Two go hand in hand, absolutely 100%. So, Jack Goodings, I'm trustee for parental alienation awareness. So, I have my own channel, and uh, I have. Uh, the, uh, the, the face of the parental alienation as well, and obviously the groups, the county groups across the UK, and obviously the helpline as well. But that aside, today is a very special day. I'm not going to speak to the ladies today, but I'd like to say for any of the ladies out there that are recognizing that it's Father's Day, then uh, thank you very, very much. It means a lot to all the women out there who can see that men are going through this whole kind of what's it's called parental alienation and and you your heart goes out to us thank you it means it means a lot it really does to be seen and to recognize that it's not a gendered thing so today i'm going to talk to the guys so get comfortable just a little bit in fact you know what i'm going to adjust this camera just a touch oh, i just want to speak man to man as such okay so I'm not going to say Happy Father's Day, but but I'm going to tell you what happened today when I woke up this morning, uh, because what I just said is relevant. Uh, you'll hear around everywhere people saying, oh, be strong, step out of it, all your emotions, it's going real strong today, it's a tough day today, it's a tough day. And so, you, you know, it's, it is a tough day, isn't it? You've lost your kids. You're battling with calf cast, maybe. If you're over in the States, you don't know what calf cast is, but somehow you've, you've ended up lost your kids somehow. And, or you've lost your access to being able to parent. Forget the bloody visitation rights and stuff like that. It's, it's stupid. How can one person leave a relationship intending to still be dad but you're now a visitor. This is a really long process and certain things kind of happen within you and I think they happen within you because of the trauma. Because there are certain things that the trauma is so bad that you have to let go or, or die in many cases. And I don't say that lightly. <sighs> okay. So... Here's me, Jack Goodings, coming across, recognizing that you're a parent, because you are a parent, so it's Father's Day, but you can't parent your child, and your child has not contacted you. Bloody hell, that's a gut-wrenching thing, isn't it? With your, your son, your daughter, your children, they've not even bothered to reach out. They, they have such low regard this is the way it comes across. Such low regard for you, punishing you maybe as well. I'm not saying it's exactly what's going on, but that's the way it comes across. And sometimes it is what's going on. That they can't even reach out to you and say, Happy Father's Day, Dad. Or they might, they might have reached out, they might have given you a card, but there's still no relationship. They might have given you a card, but you still can't parent. So maybe you're still seeing them a tiny little bit. And it's irregular. You've become a visitor. You do the best that you can in trying to still make sure that they're safe, that they're provided for. You're still trying to do whatever you can to be a dad. And you're there for them all the time, 100% of the time. But they don't recognize your position as parents. They don't recognize your authority I suppose I don't mean that in a controlling dominant sort of authority but your position as parent and your credibility as parent they don't recognize that it seems it's gone they pulled away maybe you haven't seen them for such a long time maybe they turned around and they've called you by your first name maybe they've said they're not coming over anymore am, am I hitting the spot on some of these what else am I missing at the moment and maybe this has been going on for ages. And maybe you thought that perhaps, oh, ah, they come back. Things seem to be okay. And then 
you either say something or they perceive that you've said something or you've intended or whatever it is and they're gone again and they're gone for such a long time and then they write back to you at some point a year down the road and say how come you've never contacted me when you have like you've, you've all the time you've tried you've never wanted to know me and all this kind of stuff and you have and they got it all wrong it seems well they it is it is it's all wrong it's all wrong so it, i'm literally coming out to you right now saying it's father's day so and and there's you hiding not hiding but but it's not hiding that's the wrong word uh, it's more like I say all these things I've been there and I've been there for years so what do I call that isolating not hiding isolating so you're isolating so and you're low in spirit what have you got to be cheerful about isn't it you your kids don't want to know or maybe they do want to know, but they're too scared. Or maybe they've distanced themselves because they're not able to get access to you. Maybe they've been moved across from one part of town or country, maybe to a different country. And may over time, you know, they've not been encouraged to keep in touch with you. And the other family and the other parent have been like so intense with them all. And you've just gone further and further and further back into the distance. And you become rather insignificant, it seems. And you they're gone. It's that situation, isn't it? So what do you do? Where are you? If you're waking up, you've woken up now, you listen to this message. You go, bloody hell, Jack. So look, I'm gonna tell you a tiny little bit and about me. And basically everybody that I speak with has had suicide ideations because the pain's been so bad, the loss has been so bad. And I'll put my hand up. I consider that several times. I don't now. But the one thing that stopped me was a good Lord. Another thing that stopped me was my love for my children. I couldn't do that to my kids. I encourage you, if you have suicide ideation and you get real dark places, I highly encourage you to please don't go there because that will have lifetime impact on your children and things do change. Hmm, do I tell you what happened this morning? You're probably going to guess. I'm going to tell you after a bit. Right. I left in 2007. And I had a good relationship with my kids. It's a good relationship. They'll turn around now and they'll say that I shouted all the time. I can't remember shouting all the time. But I do know I raised my voice at times. It's really, really difficult to exist and, and function in chaos it's really hard when people are in a war zone they're going to raise their voice they're going to you know they're not going to be at their baseline are they this is my baseline you know i, I smile I, I i kind of chuckle i laugh at silly things i find a joke within any place where there's like maybe a bit of doom and gloom i kind of find a little bit of an upbeat in there uh for the most part and even Though I was being, am being alienated, was being, have been, it picks up its own pace, it picks up its own life. It kind of, once it's set in place, it sort of does its own thing. And, and then it's like, well, a bit of a free fall. You might be sitting there lying there, not being able to get out of bed, or, or what's, the, what's the point of getting out of bed? Been there? And been at the dark night of the soul, been scrambling. What do you grab hold of? You'll hear messages of people out there saying you've got to step back. You've got to look at it from outside. And it's that's actually true. But to be able to do that is like, oh, you're bloody telling me to let go and look at it from outside and all that lot. You know, I'm, well, I'm in turmoil. What's happening really in your body is you've got all these chemicals going and it's causing you, it's making you ill and it's affecting your executive functionings up here. Uh, your amygdala is going all over the place, you know, as far as your processing of uh, all your emotions and, I mean, forget your intellect, you, you know, you've got 
other things on your mind, haven't you? And your whole body is in a real chemical state. That's what this emotion is doing. Your cortisol's gone over the place, your calcium levels inside your body. You can't flush it out. You, you don't want to eat or you eat too much or you start doing other kind of unhealthy behaviors or whatever it might be, but you're still trying to manage and you're still trying to hold on to the kind of relationship that you knew that you had with your kids. Can I be a bit blunt right here, a bit rough? I think I can say this for the majority, if not all. Forgive me if this isn't the case for you, but I think that the relationship that you had with your kids, the way that you remembered it, the way that you had, the way it should have been, the way it should have evolved and developed over time naturally, how it would have done naturally, that's not going to happen. That's something, it's, that's so it's done. That's done. The relationship with, that you had with your kids and their relationship with you, that part of it is done. And I'm going to advise now. You haven't asked me to advise you, but I'm going to advise. What you need to do to at least maintain some kind of sanity is to recognize that this, in your situation, I'm going to use the word just, but I'm going to use it lightly, okay, is just another transition phase in your situation, in your family. You know, I'm not part of the family. They don't see me as part. You are part of the family. You always will be, even though there's other people and somebody with a pathology, this is narcissism behind this. Okay. They think that they own everything that you've left them and or, or this, the separation means that you've left being a, a, a dad as well. Well, you know that's not true. Your kids don't know what to believe. It's not a safe situation for them, but they might not know it. Like, like logically, cognitively, they might not be thinking, oh, this is dangerous situation. They won't be thinking that. So I'm speaking to you, man old to man old. I don't want to say that. That sounds stupid, did not it? Speaking to you guy to guy, man to man, dad to dad. Okay, dads, two dads, you and me. Of course, there's a lot of you I'm speaking to. It's just got you and me right now. Okay, so I, uh, I, won't, I won't give any kind of name. I want to use the names. I want to speak to you, but I'll go you. <laughs> Dad, dad. So look, you're really strong, dad. You know, I'm not going to feed you full of all that kind of crap of, oh, you're the provider and you'll be alpha or whatever it might study. It's no, no, you're a warm hearted person. You've done the right thing. You did what you believed was right. You did the right things. You looked after your kids. You were a good dad. You're a good dad. You did all these things and you held. You had your patience, you held on your temper as long as you possibly could. Sometimes it would slip out. Sometimes we'd make mistakes, which they wouldn't have been mistakes under normal situations. We didn't even know. You played with your kids, you probably cooked a little bit, you went out hard working, you have gone into, maybe gone into debt, you've gone into financial destitution for them, even maybe to look after everybody else as well. You've done your your, your bloody darndest to be to be a parent, to be a dad, and and if you were married, to be a husband as well. So when this day comes along, and you're in this situation of like it's the darkest, this might be your first Father's Day that you've not seen your kids, or your first Father's Day that that you're really experiencing very very bad, uh, alienating kind of ways of being that you, you know, you've not got your kids showing you a bit of love. I'm not going to deny that it hurts like hell. It's bloody painful. It's incredibly like, how do you get through that day? And you just want to, you know, uh, can I swear? I'm going to swear. I'm going to fucking day. And that's my fucking day. It's not, it's, I'm fucking fed. <laughs> you know, you know, it's the only swearing I'm going to do right now. Okay. And, um, 
Um, oh no, there's that um again. Some habits, eh? So you're making the best that you can around you. You're probably trying to survive maybe in a different living situation. Maybe it's a situation where your kids can't come around. You might be in somebody's, uh, you might be in your car, you might be in a hotel, you might be uh, at your parents, your folks, your, your brothers or sisters, a relative, whatever, a friend sleeping on the couch. You might be in a single bedroom, shared accommodation, whatever it is. You might be in a warehouse, been there, you might be on the streets. And you might have so much going on that you really can't do the normal sort of day-to-day -day parenting, even if your kids were there. So, 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 so what do you do with Father's Day? So I, you, I get my cards out every time Father's Day comes along. In fact, I don't actually get my cards out. I leave my cards up there for the whole year. And next door right now, I've got still got a, a, a few, a couple Father's Day cards. I always keep them out. I've got one section for my daughter, another section for my son. The anxiety, oh, let me shift for a minute, sorry. The anxiety that you're feeling inside of you, it's real, obviously, of course. Then you've got to try and function normally. People don't understand it. And... You can't even tell people. People don't want to hear, really. You know. So you're on your own. Speaking to you as, as a guy, I've, got, I've been through it. I swear by heavens, I've been that roller coaster of thinking they were here and then gone and here and gone. Mistakes I've made. And I've been on the bloody floor praying to God, man, saying, please take me. Just I don't want to do this anymore. Please don't throw Father's Day away. If other people aren't recognizing that you're a dad, that you're a father, but please don't, don't, don't do that to yourself. This is your day. You know, don't let anybody out. And others, they, they want you to suffer. They want you to be down in the dumps. They want you to not enjoy this day. This is your bloody day. And they're trying to take it away from you, man. They're trying to take your father's day away. Are you seriously going to do that? Really? Honestly, are you seriously going to go, oh, it's my father's day and the kids are supposed to be here and I can't do anything. And I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of me. And back in those years, many years, now I'm not making fun of anybody. <sighs> not even making fun of them, but what I'm saying that, you know, the people who have done this to us and our kids. <laughs> What I am saying is they, they, they would be delighted to know that you're in misery right now. So why don't you, you can't get rid of that discomfort and misery. Why don't you embrace that discomfort instead? And when you embrace that discomfort, you're acknowledging it. And you're saying, this is how I'm feeling. And I've got every reason to feel that way and every right as well. I'm probably not going to share it with anybody else because I can share it with me. Me's enough. Me is dad. I'm dad and I'm doing dad now. I'm parenting by picking this up and I'm holding this today. I'm holding it. But you know what? Today being, being dad's day, this is the day when I'm going to get up. I'm going to make myself a loaf of bread. This is a day I'm going to get up. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to pot her around in the garden. I'm going to get myself an ale. Not too many because then you start dip, dipping back down again in that deep dark hole. This is the day when you may look through the photos. Smile a bit. Look at some of the good photos. Sort a few of them out. Choose one and put it on your mantel shelf. The good photo, not the ones that remind you of all darkness or whatever it is. This emotion, when it's you're feeling it, it's kind of acting like a cleansing thing. You know, when you get scouring pads and you're cleaning stuff up. This is actually what's going on. You're feeling this emotion because there's a pain because something's wrong, and that pain is telling you that something's wrong. So it's a natural pain. Don't let the pain bring you down. Recognize it as it's a natural pain. There's something that's not supposed to be happening. 
So you recognize that, you go, okay, yeah, I see that, you know, I recognize it. So this pain, you start changing inside because something that was happening before wasn't working or hasn't worked, or there's been an injustice done, and it causes you to re reflect a little bit more. And it causes you to assess the situation or it causes you to stop thinking. Sometimes you need to just stop thinking. You'll know. Just listen to yourself. You'll know. Sometimes, like today, just have to stop. Just stop. You have to let it be there and just be there with it. Intentionally get up and do something. Intentionally go into your car, go drive down and get a newspaper. Intentionally get in your car, go down and get a steak. Have a steak dinner and potatoes with melted butter, mint sauce or whatever it is that you put on there. I don't know. Mustard sauce on the steak. Intentionally get up, wash, brush your hair, do your teeth, put on something nice and go out into the public and just walk down the street. You'll feel like you're on your own, and you are, in a sense. And throughout that one day, maybe say to somebody, Happy Father's Day, buddy. Yeah? Or maybe just say to somebody, Hi. Go out intentionally and do something for you, because this is your day. I hope I'm getting through to you a little bit. That, you know, he, look, he, you're in this state of being. You might be 17 years down the road. I'm 17 years down the road. And it's not instant. It's a, they call it you know, death by a million cuts. It is bit by bit by bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. And you never realize that your children one day are going to say, I'm never going to see you again. And they're gone. You had no idea that that was ever going to happen. No idea, but it did, it happened. And I'm not saying, oh, don't worry about it. I'm saying that's real bad. What happens to you is, it's, it's a criminal offense, in my opinion. It's against the human rights, isn't it? So that is criminal offense. It's, that's, a, that's a international criminal offense. It's a human rights thing. What they've done to you and what your kids have been allowed to do to you. So they're, they're young. They don't know. For one thing, they do know, but they, they're not us. They're not old like us. You know. You've got to treat today like it's yours. Because it is your day. So don't let them take it away. I heard Charlie McCready yesterday, his video. He's saying... Step back. But he's right. When you're in that situation, it's, I can't take you there. No one can take you there. But to try to put yourself in this position of going, okay, this is what it is. It hurts like hell. And trying, what you're trying to do is try to transition into this next part of your parenting. It doesn't seem like parenting, but this is parenting still in a strange, weird way. You might put a thumbs down when you hear this, but before you put a thumbs down, I want you to listen to me, okay? 17 years I've done this. I lost both of my kids. I've been called first name over and over. I've been a, 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 all kinds of abuse, all kinds of disgusting stuff happened to me, gang stalking, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I thought about taking my life so many times. So how can I get to this point right now and be sort of okay? I kind of got to a point where I accepted. It took bloody years to do it. It doesn't have to take that long for you to survive it. 
But now I want to tell you what I woke up to this morning. It's the first message in seven years that I heard any of my kids out of the blue text, Happy Father's Day. That's where I go. Who was that from? That was from my son. I'd love it to be from my daughter, and you know, it still might be. I might, who knows? And their cards are from when they were sort of young and when they're teenagers and stuff. And we hooked up for the first time in four years of not seeing each other at all. And only a couple of conversation, text conversations, which were vile. It was really awful. So I'm not talking bad about my son. I don't blame him for anything or my daughter. I do not blame them for any of this at all. None of this. What I'm trying to get across to you is if I say this hope, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So remember that. I think put that hope aside and kind of just go through life. You put it aside, you just go through life. Else we get into this kind of codependent state of being with our children and that destroys us. So on Father's Day, it's time today for you to turn it all around on you and you'll hear people say, take care of your younger self, parent your younger self, parent you. Do the things that you need you to do. Took a long time getting to that message, didn't it? This is your Father's Day. Do something for you today, okay? I really do care about that. Do something for you, please. And maybe go back and mourn tomorrow, but not today. All right? Okay. Okay, I'm going to go. Can you please like, share, subscribe? If you need to get a hold of me, then uh, the uh, email address is down in the description. And the PA Awareness, if you have a look for the, uh, the website, is www.paawareness.co.uk. Obviously, I'm Jack. I've got my own channel, but I'm not going to mention that on here because I'm putting this on both channels. And I really don't want to edit so much. I just want to get it up there so that I can get it out to you straight away, first thing in the morning, for you to wake up and listen to this whole 30 minutes of me rambling on about being a dad and relating to you and all that kind of stuff and recognizing what you're going through and all that. And I get to the point at the end of this video where I start rambling on again. Uh, so, right, it's from me, Jack Goodings, and it's your Father's Day. Do something with it, please. All the best. Bye.